Hello and welcome to ANN7. I am Sifiso Mashangu and I bring you an exclusive with the public protector, advocate Busisio Mkwebani. She just completes her first year in office. You might as well know there are a lot of controversies surrounding the office of the public protector in South Africa. The state of capture report, the CIX report, and a lot of matters that are still subjudicate. But it is honest and true to allow advocate Mkwebani Advocate Mkwebana, I welcome you to the show. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Mahangu, and um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to engage with uh, ANN7 and yourself. You've just completed your first year in office. Mm -hmm. Can you take us back? There are many controversies surrounding this office, your appointment. There's a lot of comparison that is made between you and the former public protector, Ms. Taking you back, I mean, during the interviews, um, South Africans, all South Africans, or most South Africans were watching the interviews. Most South Africans um, were very impressed about my performance, and um, it's so unfortunate that after that um, interview, um, there were a lot of allegations that I'm a Zuma person even though the interview was conducted, it was a transparent process. And uh, the uh, parliament recommended to the president for my appointment. And since then, it has never been easy. I think we all know that uh, it's only one political party which never supported my appointment. And um, there's also some of the challenges which one is still experiencing as far as they are concerned. Um, the journey has been um, very smooth. I normally say to people, I'm sorry in the, middle, in the midst of this uh, storm. And uh, the comparison, I think I've said it several times that uh, I mean, people were saying, am I going to fit the shoes? And I've been saying, I'm bringing my own shoes. I'm bringing my own I'm style. Quite nice shoes they are too. <laughs> Yes. yes, so um, it's been good and we've been working and not being um, distracted by what has been said and I'm always encouraging the team in every opportunity I get to say don't be distracted, uh, let's do our work, let's just think about the people at the grassroots because they need us more than anything. When you walked into this office and took over, uh, at that time this state of capture report was on everyone's lips. How was that handover? Were you received well into this office? I would say uh, there was never an opportunity where one can just hit the ground uh, uh, walking. I had to hit the ground running. I think you remember in two days after appointment, I had to go to present the annual report, which was prepared by the former public protector and the team. and. Uh, there was a state of capture report which was still in court, you remember, and uh, it was not yet uh, released. And that's when, when the court ordered that it be released. Uh, that is a public protector report. I had to defend that particular report, which is an institution's uh, report. So it has been um, very hectic, and uh, the handover uh, process has never been an easy uh, journey. Uh, which we had to undertake because I think those are some of the lessons we need to learn, especially when there is changes because it has an impact on the change management issues and the proper handover from one uh, uh, person to to another. But you know, um, we are operating within the space of the law, which never changes, is the constitution. Uh, our mandate is very clear. Therefore, it's, it's, it's not a challenge to just adapt and move forward with the, with the, with the task at hand. Do you have a relationship with the former public protector? Um, not really uh, that we have a relationship, and not to say we don't have a relationship as well. Um, indeed, uh, during that uh, process when I started the office, she offered that at any time if I need any uh, uh, assistance, I must just come back to her. Um, remember again, we've got uh, an institution which has uh, skilled investigators. 
So a lot of work which has been left in this office by OEL, which has been received during her tenure, there are investigators which are here. As I've indicated several times, uh, the issue of backlog, the issue of cases received back to 2011, 2012, especially the complex matters, which is a backlog which we need to deal with. Therefore, the senior investigators are here. Uh, they have institutional memory, which uh, one is making sure that I work with them and then taking the direction which I would uh, take, because sometimes you find that possibly a certain direction was taken, then I would uh, take the direction which will be suitable and convenient for me. Mm. Many, many people say that Ms. Madon Sela took on high-profile cases, cases that uh, got a lot of media coverage. But I remember when you took office, you made it very clear that you are going to go down to the grassroots. Cases that uh, the people on the ground, you know, the poor people who suffer inequality in this country uh, are close to. Do you think that there is a difference in the management of the cases you take in this office? I must indicate that, you know, um, as I've said earlier, that I'm bringing my own shoes and uh, I was telling my um, senior managers that uh, I had to give them my background, that um, I'm a rural girl. I grew up um, in Guajafontein. I know what is poverty. Um, I know what is it eating pap and salt or pap and, and sugar. And therefore, I could relate to what people are going through. I still go home in Guajafontein and drive on those gravel roads or... I still go home where I discover there's no water, there's a high level of unemployment because people don't have the resources. So when you go to that particular, uh, or you come from that particular background, because I was explaining to them to say you need to understand why the eight pillars of the vision 2023, because it says we need to be a stronghold to the poor and the marginalized. And I've said it several times, during, in fact, even uh, during my interview, to say my focus is to address the triple challenges uh, of unemployment, poverty, and inequality, which uh, anyway is one of the values which is there in the Constitution. So, um, and the issue of the high-profile cases or the complicated matters, we have them, but again, my principle is let's deal with the cases which we've received, um, which are a backlog cases because people have complained, they are waiting for the outcome of their cases. We are also doing the very same uh, 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 thing which government institutions are doing by delaying the issues of undue delay. So let's fast track those issues, bread and butter issues, which have an impact on ordinary or grassroots people. Not neglecting the very same high profile uh, cases which we do investigate. Because I've also said to my team, corruption, it doesn't have a color. It's black and it's white. Therefore, whatever we do or whatever corruption does, it has an impact on the very same people at the grassroots. Therefore, I investigate any kind of uh, issues. But then I wouldn't be dictated to by anyone because, I mean, the Constitution is very clear. Section 181.3. That uh, the in fact all chapter nine institutions we are independent. No one or no organ of state must interfere with our operations. Therefore, I cannot be told by a certain political party or anyone to say why are you sitting on certain reports which I'm not sitting on. Uh, but then at the end of the day is to make sure that whoever cannot have a voice, whoever doesn't have the capacity to stand up for themselves. So we are there for, for that particular issue. You, you have a background in government, from home affairs, from state security. You've worked in China at uh, a, an embassy in, in, in South Africa. Perhaps that was the DA's lead to, to call you a spy. Um, why did you not take the Democratic Alliance to court on those allegations? You know, uh, Mr. Matlang, I've given them, you remember in February, I also indicated that if they don't withdraw or retract the statement, I'll be taking the matter on to court. Um, we've issued the letter of demand. Still, they are not willing to retract. Um, I can confidently say next week 
the latest will be issuing the the, 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 the papers against the A for defamation. You know why we am doing that? It's because it has an impact on the credibility of this institution. It creates the very same issue where people don't trust the institution because of what the DA is saying. And I must indicate that, yes, for the rest of, in fact, my whole career, 20 years plus, I've been working in government, I've been a prosecutor, been a researcher in a Human Rights Commission, worked in international relations as justice, um, yes, then um, uh, worked for the Public Protector before going to Home Affairs. Um, so the good thing about my expertise is that I know all sectors of uh, government, how it operates, and the issue of uh, all sectors of, uh, in fact, uh, the law, human rights, and the issues which are affecting the ordinary people. At Home Affairs, I worked a lot with asylum seekers and refugees, which are a vulnerable group. Uh, in China, I worked um, on issues of immigration. And again, um, that also had an impact on my career because I think those are true communists. And uh, what they do for their citizens, it's really empowering them. Hence, I mentioned several times as well that there are projects which uh, or the government should be creating an enabling environment uh, where uh, ordinary citizens and ordinary people can be able to, to thrive in that particular space. Therefore, the allegation that I've been a spy, I mean, I worked for state security for uh, three months, and uh, that's one of the best experience also in three months which I got there. And I've been saying as well, possibly state security should be doing a lot of work to dis demystify the issue of uh, that a person who's working for state security is a spy. It's, it's not the truth. I mean, those people are very... One can be a very... cleaner or a, a secretary or a driver or... Even the very same analyst role. and everyone. But they need to know, South Africans, that those people are very critical for protecting the sovereignty of this particular country. They are protecting us from a number of issues. I mean, as a country, we are fortunate. We don't have any uh, attacks from other countries, especially maybe terrorists and stuff like that. So that's where they are key. And they are state employees, and we cannot label them. Mm -hmm. Many have said you are a Zuma woman, mm -hmm. that uh, you know you, President Jacob Zuma has appointed you in the trust and faith that you will deliver on the ANC mandate. And I remember some of your competitors or part of the panelists that you, you were with in the interview. Mm -hmm. And they are some heavyweights in the legal fraternity. And I quote uh, people such as uh, Judge uh, Siraj Desai. Mm -hmm. uh, are you a Zuma person? Um, you know, the issue of a Zuma person, I indicated earlier that it was a transparent interview. Uh, President Zuma was not sitting there answering for me and uh, the members of the National Assembly recommended me to the president. And again, I've been saying, the president, president Zuma is the president of the country. And therefore, if there's any investigation and anything which I need to engage the president on, I will definitely engage the president on. He's the president of the country, and I respect the institution, which is the presidency. Therefore, um, as the power protector again, being legally qualified, being an ombudsman, um, and a public protector being appointed at the level of a judge, uh, have you seen judges going on media or everywhere accusing people? Because if they say uh, you should be investigating Zuma, currently there's nothing I can investigate the president on because the state of capture report is in court for, for, for review. Therefore, it's like, I mean, some people will even say to you, no, you must have any finding against the president or you are a president protector. But then there's no matter which I'm investigating currently which involves the president besides the, the issue of a state of capture, which is uh, in court as we speak. Yes. Uh, are you a member of the African National Congress? I'm not the member of the African National Congress. I've said it during the interview. I'm not a card-carrying member, but I indicated that my vote is my secret, and I've got my own um, uh, preferences and what I would want 
the South Africans to be able to achieve. Because for me, I'm passionate about the issue of the grassroots, the issue of uh, eradicating poverty, issues of empowering South Africans, everyone to be able to be able to enjoy um, the uh, resources of this country. So um, I would say I could relate to their policy, but though I'm not a card-carrying member. Let's talk about the CIX report. Uh, quite a heated uh, report indeed. Advocate uh, Paul Hoffman um, indicts the um, CIX report. Mm -hmm. uh, a foreign company presents an investigation. The APSA bailout, much looting by many companies in South Africa between the government of national unity or just coming into democracy. Mm -hmm. You come into office and you attempt to take APSA by its horns. You want to see the CIX report fully implemented, but there is a pushback. You know, you are called names, um, you are taken to court, you are called a Zuma person uh, because you want to implement the CIX report into full, full capacity. What happened when you attempted to to take the recommendations of the CIX report. Maybe you should also add on top of that that uh, received a lot of uh, personal attacks, especially, you know, my house was also attacked. I've, we've received threatening emails and all those. Um, but then I would say um, I was do, I'm doing my job. And um, what needs to be said as well, even if the matter is in court, that report is still valid. I agreed to set aside this, the part which was dealing with the um, amendment of the Constitution. Because there, the crafting, I've said it, I'm willing to retract it. Because the way it was crafted, indeed, um, it was a binding uh, remedial action. I've been saying the institution of an ombudsmanship um, originally is making recommendation and the, uh, 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 the constitutional court decision made this institution to when we have remedial actions which are binding. But what I've learned from that process is that uh, I would be issuing reports. Some of the reports I would be saying it's strictly a recommendation. It, it doesn't have any binding effect. So that's one thing which I can say I've learned from. But the report is still binding. And the issue that uh, uh, the proclamation to recover must be reopened is still there. Yes, the matter is before court, and then we will see what is happening. It's so unfortunate that, I mean, if you discover a lot of things, I mean, I've said it, corruption has no color. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, issues which happened then, which South Africans must be aware of. And uh, possibly that's why such resistance, such attacks. Because my investigation was focusing on South African government. You cannot spend 600,000 uh, pounds and uh, you, there's an identification that so much money has been looted or there was an illegal gift and nothing is done. Remember the, the investigation was for the government to say, why didn't you? do anything about that. Yes, something was done, but then did you achieve what was meant to be achieved? Are you saying that APSA must still pay back the money? The report is still valid, and uh, the recommendation is still valid, the remedial action, that uh, SIU should reopen and uh, um, uh, recover the money. Roughly, Advocate, how much are we talking about when we speak of you know, recovery of funds um, in, in a rough estimation, how much would need to, to be paid back to, to the South African government? It's uh, around one billion um, which needs to be recovered, especially from APSA, because we focused our attention on APSA and the other recommendation, we were saying um, SIU should also um, amend the proclamation to be able to recover the others. Remember, there was also 
allegations in that uh, report about um, your son Lam and uh, Demla Kreiser and others who are also uh, accused of, of that. But then on that one, it will be another investigation. On this one, the amount we are talking about is that one billion mm -hmm. plus. Why did the previous public protector seem to ignore the CIX report? I remember many, many questions uh, I, as a, a journalist, wrote to inquire to this very office to say, uh, is the CIX report being ignored? Uh, a few days after taking office, you indicated to the nation that you are going to do something about the CIX report. Why is it that in seven years, nothing was said and nothing was done so far as CIX is concerned? I think South Africa deserves an explanation of some sort. I think on that one, I wouldn't answer for her, but I would say a lot of work was done. I mean, uh, several in, uh, interviews were conducted, a uh, number of documentation was there. Um, so um, when I took over, uh, those were some of the pending issues to say these are the reports which are, are still pending. Um, in the office. So that one was also investigated within the private office. Hence, I managed to um, reallocate or allocate it to, in fact, there was an investigation in the private office who was working on that. So it was a question of monitoring to its finality. So because the other cases which we still have and are on it's backlog cases are dealt with in the branches, again, I've made sure that we have a task team where every week we can meet and follow up on all those old uh, cases and on all those high-profile uh, uh, matters. So hence you would see we've issued a lot of reports. I mean, currently they are standing at 27, um, but a lot of them are dating backward. Mm. The EFF uh, came out and said they doubt your understanding or interpretation of one, the Public Protectors Act, uh, to the, the South African Constitution. Uh, how do you respond to the fact that perhaps an error was made on your part with the dealing of the CIX report? On that particular issue, I'd need to say that, um, um, again, a number of uh, judges' uh, decisions have been set aside. Um, on appeal. I mean, you remember the State versus Pistorius, Pistorius, where the Supreme Court of Appeal said the judge has aid or an error of judgment. But was that person um, removed or anything be said about their competency to, 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 to occupy uh, that position? No. I mean, several, several decisions. And when it comes to the issue of, uh, it's only that one report. And the, the Public Protector Act, Section 5, Subsection 3, clearly states that any report which is issued by the Public Protector or prepared by the Office of the Public Protector, when issued uh, and issued in good faith, I've issued that report in good faith. And my biggest concern and interest was to say we cannot continue because when you issue a report as the public protector, you need to make sure that your remedial action, they will uh, correct or redress um, uh, whatever prejudice is suffered and to stop that particular prejudice. Because that remedial action was also saying the mandate of the Reserve Bank is narrow, which is still narrow. And if we leave it like that, it still continue to impact on the ordinary South Africans, irrespective of the color. So it's for South Africans' benefit. So the intention was purely um, in good faith. And um, I don't think it will be fair to be judged on only one report, which is still valid, by the way, because it's only that section 7 point, uh, in fact, uh, the 7.2 remedial action, which is uh, agreed that it be set aside. Who are the people that are giving you the backlash? In your view, who are the people that are protecting capitalist interest in this country? 
that don't want to see the CIX report and 7.2, as you mentioned, uh, fully explored? Who, who might those people be? Um, you know, I wouldn't com uh, indicate basically or directly to say these are the people. But what I would say to South Africans is that, again, going back to the corruption, which doesn't have a color, now I'm dealing with this particular uh, matter. The report is still valid, but the report, especially that illegal gift, was given to, uh, unfortunately, uh, who, whoever benefited has been uh, 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 white people who benefited. And again, it involves uh, companies and that's or banks. that's an interesting banks. point, because people don't want you to say white people benefited. Uh, you know, people uh, have an issue against one, particularly the public protector saying white people benefited from the APSA bailout. But that is true, isn't it? It's the issue that the bank, and I mean, remember Bangkok was, I mean, all the directors who were there, whoever was the beneficiary, it goes to that particular extent. But now we're saying, can we make sure that that is dealt with and everybody be allowed to, to benefit? But I was addressing the issue that now it gives that perception that possibly you don't, public protector, you don't have to investigate anything which involves uh, big companies, especially if they have benefited wrongly uh, or corruptly uh, from any state institution. I mean, the kind of investigations we are doing, currently the SAA matter, for instance, the, the, the complaint is about those people being purged because they are exposing the corruption. And again, I met with NUMSA, but now the issues which are dealt the, with there, it also involves a lot of contracts which have been signed long time ago. And I mean, the challenges which the employees are saying, but there is a forensic report uh, which needs to be implemented, is not being implemented, people need to be dealt with and nothing is happening. So on the other hand, yes, it will involve some of the uh, uh, people who are corrupt, especially uh, blacks who are corrupt, but again certain others are impacting on companies which are owned by whites, which uh, are implicated, or there's maladministration which we need to be investigating. But at the end of the day, I'm saying any kind of corruption as the power protector, I will investigate. Hence my uh, understanding that sometimes the attack, it's concerning because you find that now or almost you are uh, in the media and you are being attacked, you are not given an opportunity to say your side of the story, to say um, this is the true facts, or you are perceived, as you say, as a Zuma person, which at the end of the day I'm saying there's no President Zuma meant I'm busy investigating. I'm investigating others. The EMEA matters where ministers, they've complained against ministers who might have lied or conflict of interest. We are busy investigating and soon we will be issuing reports uh, on those matters. I'm in the office of the public protector. Uh, right after this, we're going for a break and the discussion is the state of capture report. I'm Sifiso Mashang, this is ANN7. Don't go anywhere.